we spent a few hours with Joel Salatin at Polyface Farm. Our time with Joel was packed full of information which we've broken down into segments based on topic. In this video, Joel discusses turning cow manure into compost and using pigs to do the work, his epiphany moment on the piggerator, how he overwinters his animals to protect the pastures from damage, and his thoughts on pigs in silvo pastures and acorn glens. We hope you enjoy this segment on Joel Salatin's diverse knowledge of pigs and cows. So this is, this is piggerating. And uh, so when we feed hay, we feed through these, these boxes, which are suspended on pulleys. There's a winch at the end. So these boxes can just raise and lower. So the deal is the cows are dropping 50 pounds of goodies out their back end every day. And, uh, and when, the, when the ground is dormant in the winter, um, the actinomycetes, the gibberellins, and the mycorrhizae, you know, they're kind of they're not uh, metabolizing very much. And so whether it's organic or inorganic, the point is that, that um, you know, that nothing is, is, is eating nutrients in the soil in the wintertime because it's dormant. And so we want to try to minimize anything that we put on in that dormant season. And so we feed under this awning. Notice there's no sides. This yeah. is just a, an it's open, open shed. Right, yep. open shed, lots of, lots of air movement. And um, so they eat in here, they poop. And so over there is the carbon shed and the carbon then uh, comes in and we call this a carbonaceous diaper. <laughs> so that, that uh, manure and urine gets absorbed by the, by the carbon, wood chips, sawdust, uh, junk old hay, corn stover, whatever. And we add corn to it. We add corn to it as the um, you know as as the bedding increases, so you can see how I mean we're we're whatever you know three feet. It's high up. Yeah, it's way up here, and um, and then as it builds, of course, the cows are tromping out the oxygen. It's anaerobic, so yes. it's all fermenting. Mm -hmm. That ferments the corn in there, and then the cows come out, start to graze, and we put the pigs in. The pigs then seek the fermented corn and and aerate it. So we call them pig aerators and convert it from anaerobic to aerobic compost. So all of this bedding area becomes a, a massive uh, comp aerobic compost pile. And uh, so you can, you know, you, you can get in here where they've, you know, where they've churned and it smells. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You and see, feel, how, feel how warm it is. Oh yeah. It's like wow. a freshly baked bun out wow. of the oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you could put milk on this yes, and eat, eat it for it. breakfast. Yeah. So, so you know, here we are standing on however many hundreds of tons of manure and urine, but you could come in here and eat lunch. Yeah, it doesn't oh, stink yeah. at all. It, it, I was it gonna say that there's no smell at all. There's there's no smell at all, and and the uh, and the warmth, you know, from the composting, you know, you can, yeah, you can the steam it in the morning. Mm -hmm. See the steam yeah, around. Feel, oh uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so. Um, My garden would love this. Yeah, so, so this, this is the, the nuts and bolts of our fertility program yeah. right here. And I, I call this the soul of the farm. Mm -hmm. This is really the, I mean, you, you've got, your, you got your, uh, your solar energy here in, in hay, grass. grass. Yep. yep, solar energy. And uh, of course it goes through the cows. We add, we add the carbon with it. And then the pigs do the turning make the compost, and then that goes back out on the fields. So you so, run both cattle and pigs in here. Is that what you're... Well, they don't run in together. Not together. Not together, but, but, but yeah, but yeah, leader follower. So even though you call it the piggerator, it's really a, a mix of cow. It's, it's really cow. Uh -huh. And it, yeah, um, certainly we do have pig manure in here, uh -huh. but not nearly as much as cow, cow yeah. manure. The pig flop isn't nearly as valuable as the cow flop, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, it's, a lot, it's, ba it's not as balanced. So, and so, so the pigs, if you notice, the pigs have no feeder. They, they mm. have no feeder. So all they're getting oh, they're is what they're digging up. They yeah, digging up out of, the, out of the ground here. And so they, they actually, you know, they churn it. 
Oh. They churn it and oxygenate it. And um, and then when they're done, then of course, you know, then we spread it on the on the field. So, uh, you know, you're probably familiar with these, you know, windrow, windrow compost piles right, yeah. and those $25,000 compost turners and all that yes. stuff. Well, here we're using, instead of using depreciating equipment and, f and petroleum to do this, we're using appreciating, appreciating equipment in the pig. Mm -hmm. The pig doesn't need to oil change, doesn't need spare parts. No. Yeah. Um, it does the work for you. And 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 uh, because we're using appreciating infrastructure to do this, the profit potential is size neutral because we don't have to recapitalize the depreciating infrastructure yes. overheads. Yes. That's a that's a pretty critical, you know, economic element to it. So many times we think to be ecological, you have to sacrifice the economy in order to be it's economical. Other, you right? have to, yeah. People think. But I, I'm I'm trying to explain to people, no, you can you can. You can have your cake and eat it too, yeah. but 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 you can't just make ten percent deviations. You you got to make a hundred and eighty degree yeah. flip flop. Uh, Joel, can we go back to the refrigerator? I have a very specific question okay. from one of my viewers. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. His name is Dwight Hires. Okay. So, quote for the refrigerator, mm -hmm. you have space for about forty cows in the barn. That's what he says. Well, we have space for about three hundred. Okay, but, but so it's a, per but, say per stall or per. Well, well, it's it, it's a it, it's a it's a loafing area. Okay. Um, and you know, it's just a matter of how much roof space do you have. Okay. Uh, you know, we have a thousand head. We'd like we'd like to do this with all thousand, but we, we don't have them all area. thousand. We, sure. we But but here at 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 what we call you know, um, uh, Polyface Central. Uh, we, we we lease about twelve properties in the area, oh, okay. so we we have herds spread you know other places, yeah. um, but you know unfortunately, you know our landlords don't think that this is a pretty enough structure to have on their farm, and I grant oh. that it's functional. It might not be pretty, but it's functional, mm -hmm. and you know half the world doesn't live in houses better than this. That's correct. So if this is good enough for a for a person to live in, it's certainly good enough for a cow to live in. Yes. And and it's cheap. We we can build this. We I mean you know, I mean this is just poles for rafters. Okay, so the roof isn't isn't totally flat. But I've never had a cow say that roof isn't flat. I'm not going in there. You know I've never had that happen. Uh, when there's a blizzard out here, the cows love to be in here. They don't care if there's a few waves in in the roof. Right. So you know we can build this for fifty cents a square foot. Um, but yeah, we have room for about three three hundred here. Sure. Between between the two. We've got we've got another, yeah. You can see it from here. The far far barns up yeah, there. Yeah, it's gonna. So yeah, that, that that's got room for about one twenty. This one has room for about one eighty. Okay. So the last part is, what do you do with the winter manure from the other cattle that aren't in a pigerator? Okay, so right here is it here? Okay, no. Okay, so so here so here's the here's the answer. Um, I just told you that in my perfect world we would do this for all of them. Correct. Okay, um, but we don't live in a perfect world, <laughs> and so. Um, so we are actually this spring, uh, building our first, um, hay shed on a rental property. The first landlord that said, yeah, um, oh. I, I'm, I'm happy for one of these to be on it. So we're really excited about being able to expand onto another place. Um, what we do right now though, here's what we do right now. Right now we bring as many here as possible and feed longer here to take pressure off the stockpile areas and other places the idea is to try to not start feeding hay on any other place until about mid-february okay okay that gets us close enough to spring you know we're uh you know we're, we're 30 40 days away that we don't get the leaching and the vaporization from those dormant cow pies that we would on the same pie that landed in December, for example, mm. that has the winter rushing, uh, uh, flushing uh, over it, okay? So what we found is that there's a big difference between, um, you know, manure and urine that goes on a field, for example, in mid-February versus mid-January or mid-December. So the whole idea is to feed more here so that we can, so as long as we're on stockpiled fescue or stockpiled grasses on the other farms, then you have enough biomass to kind of lock down most of the nutrients. But as soon as you go past the stockpile, and the stockpile of course is, is, is pasture that we've, we've saved back, okay? In the fall, let it grow up, save it back. And that has enough, bio, enough carbon in the, in the material to, to metabolize, to absorb, to hold the manure and urine 
from it self. Yeah. But as soon as you eat it down, and then you start feeding hay on that ground, mm -hmm. then you're over you're over applying uh, more than that the natural carbon base can handle. Mm -hmm. In nature, you know, they didn't feed hay. So in nature, animals never ate hay when they were when they were through the stockpile, they moved. They moved you know, the bison, around. the yep. elk, the what okay, they, they moved. And so um, you know, but they didn't have fences mm -hmm. and we have fences and, you know, probably the, you know, Starbucks downtown doesn't want our cows running through their parking lot. Okay. So, so, um, so because we have fences, uh, we make hay. And so the way to approximate that the best is to try to, um, is to try to hold off the hay feeding until it's close enough to spring, you know, 30, 40 days. To, to some warm up and some and some soil activity that you don't lose much sure before before spring comes does that make sense it does yeah, yeah. thank you that's great so it's a it's a pretty intricate dance actually yeah uh, to try to coordinate things so that that happens so so here you know here we'll start feeding hay usually around the first of January mm. and then on the other places, We'll usually be able to go in, in, into well into February before we uh, feed any hay, sure. and, um, and, and and some and some groups uh, we actually go through the winter with no hay. Wow! You know, on average we feed hay forty days a year. Uh, I mean, the in general, um, and the average here is one hundred and twenty. Okay. So the average farmer here feeds hay one hundred twenty days a year. Wow. We, feed, we feed for forty. Nice. Wow. And 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 we have and we have three times as many cows per acre as right. they do. So it's not because we you know we have have less uh, have acres. less you know fewer animals per acre. It's it's uh, it's all about management. Mm -hmm. this compost I didn't have a front end loader all I had was a silage fork and a strong back and I used to make this compost look, look at look at all the corn see this is the corn oh, yeah. kernels right here here's the uh, here's the welfare hog right here <laughs> but see these things get they, they get they get soft see look at that yeah that's just that's just alcohol it's just fer fermented. Corn. It's fermented, and yeah, here, and they actually, they actually prefer that oh, wow. to fresh corn. Sure. And so they hit a gold mine when they find it. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh, Time yeah. to root. But you know the thing is, you know they don't have to fill out licenses, call attorneys, go to doctor appointments, and so they have all the time in the world to do this. Yeah. And 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 they love to do it. I mean, yes, this honors the, this honors the pigness of the pig. How did you figure this out? Did this just happen accidentally one day, or were you? It, it, it was it was one of those epiphanies. Yeah. Okay. And I, I love epiphany moments. All yeah. right. So so I was actually I was actually so we we were you know back in the day we had whatever you know twenty cows, and we only fed under you know under one of these, and and I literally shoveled it. You know I brought yeah. stuff in in a wheelbarrow and pitchfork and, 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 and pitchfork and I I shoveled it. Yep. And um, what happened? Oh, you, you, <laughs> you, want, there, you want a piece of that pie, huh? <laughs> so, what, what happened? Aren't they just beautiful? Yeah, they really are. Yeah. Do you want to come in and I'll take it off? And so, I was, I was actually speaking one of the early first times down in um, Southern Virginia at a conference. I don't remember what the conference was. But I, I wasn't speaking this particular session, so I went over and listened to one of the others. And it was a presentation by American Livestock Breeds Conservancy mm. out of North Carolina. And uh, and they were just going through they were just going through pictures, they were just going through pictures of heritage breeds, different kinds of breeds, different kinds of things, and they showed a they showed a picture of a I think a red wattle a red wattle pig, and uh, the pig just happened to be standing on a a steaming pile of horse stable manure, mm -hmm. steaming. He had this all over. His, it was clear he'd been churning it, and I mean it was just like a stroke of lightning. Yeah. There I mean, we I said, go. That's yes. Yeah. This is it because mm -hmm. we've been we've been handling this by hand. Yes. 
and uh, and and we're 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 actually making we were, we were double handling it, making windrow compost piles. We we'd come to that point by then. I came right home. I bought two pigs, put corn in, and never looked back. I mean, when I saw what they did, and here you are, and, and here we are now yeah. with hundreds and hundreds of and and the fertility now. You know, we've gone from whatever twenty cows to a hundred cows mm -hmm. on the same acreage. Um, you know, organic matter from. Uh, you know, at that time, one percent organic matter. Now it's over eight percent organic wow. matter, and um, so yeah, it's a it's a real it's a real deal. The electric fence up there, it's in, it's in half acre paddocks. Those are for pigs. Those are for pigs, yeah. We've been we've been running pigs in there for, oh goodness, 15 years. Uh, uh, this is another kind of what we call an acorn blend. These are oak trees. And so you can see the electric fence. So we, we finished pigs in here on acorns. Okay. And we've got about 12 of these all up the mountain. Okay. Um, and this one, we've been able to actually kind of prune out the junk stuff and just leave the good oak trees. Sure. And we like to do this over, you know, a lot more acreage. Yeah. But there's enough light in there now that we're actually getting some grass growth underneath. Yeah. yeah. So how often do you move your pigs through? Like, do they, you said they were five acres or half acres, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this one here is probably three acres. Three acres, okay. Um, but the, yeah, the pig pastures, these are acorn blends, pig pastures, two different things. Okay. The pig pastures, we touch them three times a year. These we touch once every year. Okay. Pigs are just unbelievable. A great grandfather from Ireland who said that pigs are the gentlemen who pay the rent. Yeah. That was his term. <laughs> <laughs> How about that?